a close up of you Sorry. when you go to leave and then decide to come back. To oh, yeah. Oh, because this whole scene when we were doing Hello. my close up, we were being so like specific about like where the eyes went and like the lean in and then lean out and as if she mouth wanted open to. Or, yeah. yeah, we had every single like minuscule movement timed out. All of this was just focused on plotting out her facial reactions. Leaning in there, then leaning back out. And there was no conscious thought in it. This is all something other people worked out. It wasn't the director, it's the showrunners. I didn't make a clip of this, but for contrast, there's this really good commentary by Natalie Dormer. Natalie Dormer is a great actress. She puts a lot of thought into things. and Some of the people just joke around in their commentary tracks. She actually has very insightful things to say. She's very intelligent. And in episode 5.3, she explains how it's a scene where Marjorie is angry and afraid because Cersei had just had her brother Loras arrested. So... She explained that in the script when she goes to confront Tommen about it, the script said she should be shouting. But Dormer worked out with the director that she doesn't, and the director's in the same commentary, and he's agreeing with her about it was a really good choice. And instead of shouting halfway through and she realizes it's not something Tommen can fix, uh, instead her voice suddenly goes really flat and dead serious, when instead she was originally supposed to be shouting. Dormer explained she made this change because it's how she felt the fictional character would react in that situation, based on her own experience, just emotionally, that she said Marjorie wouldn't do that. That if they were trying to show off her shouting, she went, that's not something Marjorie would do, and she put her foot down. And her explanation, well, how do I know that, that when you're facing a real life-or-death fear... She explained once she was in a hot air balloon with other people, and it lost control for about maybe five minutes, but it was a really long five minutes when you're in an un, out-of-control hot air balloon. And she always remembered, it, it stuck with her that for other experiences like that, that she didn't start shouting angrily at the pilot, of, do this, do this, hurry, hurry. She, she wasn't shouting, she remembered. But when talking with the other people directing the balloon, when facing real life or death fear, she remembered, you know, the adrenaline kicked in, I went into outright fight or flight mode. And when you go into fight or flight mode, your emotions get muted as your brain focuses on finding a way to regain control of the balloon, uh, of the situation on the balloon. So... She remembered how her voice went calm and flat until they landed. I mean, if you're ever really out in the wilderness, you know, like fighting a timber wolf or something, or in a collapsing building, or it, the old thing of a, a grandmother who gets a burst of adrenaline to pick up a car to lift a kid who's been trapped underneath it, you don't start shouting, that's wasting energy. Your voice drops down. And, you know, I've been in a situation where I nearly crashed, so I went into fight-or-flight mode. I know that's how I would really react. And that's classical acting, of realizing this is how a human being would react in that situation. So she reasoned that Marjorie is really afraid for the first time. And Cersei's making a play, Loras is arrested, this isn't something I can easily fix. She reasoned that Marjorie wouldn't start yelling and over-emoting when faced with real danger. You focus, so and the director agreed with her reasoning, so they made the change. This is acting. It's not just yelling on cue, it's working out the mindset of the fictional character and trying to channel it. Dormer is good at this, she knows what she's doing. She's a professional. And the payoff for all this was just down to the second. Her movement when she's looking at him getting eaten, and then as she's walking away, they timed all this of just this slow grin curling on her face. I, w I was stunned when I heard this. It, that wasn't just Sophie going, hey, Sophie, grin. They rehearsed this with, it sounds like a goddamn stopwatch. That, that, oh, wow, she grinned. Like, how is this payout? 
there is such a thing, there is such a thing, I admit, if you're going to complain about this, as choreography and blocking. Actors' physical motions are ordered around, if you're going to say that. But not this specific. And I don't need to prove this was unusual. I don't need to prove that relative to normal choreography, this was unusual. Sophie Turner already confirmed it. She said in her commentary, relative to what normal choreography is, her normal experience working on the show for six years, this was an unusually high level of stage direction fixated on her facial muscles. On just and, and down to the second, and now you slowly start curling a grin. Now you look over, you, your eyes turn ever so slightly, and they must have had a mirror or something of just, she's just counting in her head to get the exact steps of it. This isn't acting. This is just emoting on cue. To the point that they were basically playing Sophie like a hand puppet. I'm not trying to make ghoulish hyperbole. It, it sounds like they're playing her like a hand puppet. I have this mental image of, it's as if they have a hand inside her face, under her skin, someone else, that she's just a robot or something, and they're playing her facial muscles, and all, the only difference is they did it verbally, said, all right, we're counting second, two seconds, three seconds, and watching her slightly more, slightly more, slightly more grin, now, it, it just, now you're furrowing your brows a little more, a little more. This was zero artistic input from her. Whereas Dormer managed to fly under the radar and get the freedom in a not-as-important scene to go, I really don't think I should be shouting in this. These were hyper-specific directions. Every minuscule mo movement of her face, every minuscule movement of her face was rehearsed and timed so she could repeat it on cue, like a wind-up toy, well beyond what would be considered normal choreography, and she just repeated the motions that they put her through in the rehearsal takes. This was the payoff to the invented Sansa rape subplot. They considered, they all believed, wow, look at this payoff. The culmination of two years... These performances, these faces. Sophie Turner robotically making a grin on cue and at a non-moving camera. That nothing is happening in this scene. Rewatch it. The camera isn't moving. The angles are not shifting around. None of the, the movement, angle, field, focus, none of that is in there. It is her robotically making a grin on cue, timed, at a non-moving camera, with no attention to any of that. This is not cinematography.